And we're recording. And today, everybody, we're, I'm, have a, I'm joined by another special guest, another photographer, by the name of Violent Light Photo. Um, he, I think he is a very underrated photographer. I spent a lot of time looking at his photos on Instagram. Uh, the pictures he has of birds of prey are incredibly detailed. They're very sharp. They're incredibly clean. And he makes me envious that I'm not as talented as he is. <laughs> And um, yeah, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody listening who may not know who you are? Oh, thanks, man. Um, much too kind words for sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Corbin. Um, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, and I'm just a hobby photographer um, who's kind of just got into wildlife this year. Um, I've been doing photography as a hobby off and on for years and I never really got into the wildlife side of it before I wanted to but like years ago like I kind of tried a little bit of everything for photography and years ago you know I remember trying and the longest lens I had was like a 70 to 200 millimeter I know that and it's yeah it's extremely frustrating to drive around you know range roads or go out to BAM for Kananaskis and things like that and try to get close enough to animals and get the shots that you imagine in your mind. And yep. so, yeah, it just gets frustrating. And that's the other thing too, is I like that, you know, I like that really sharp image that, you know, it's hard to get with zooms. Um, and back yeah, then, so shaky. yeah, back then the only zoom that was decent was like a, cause I shoot Canon. So back then the only decent zoom was a 100 to 400 Canon L and they were still like, I think, you know, close to $3,000. And if you wanted a prime lens that was good for wildlife, like a 500 or a, even a 400, but a 500 or 600 millimeter, you were talking $8,000, $12,000. Yeah, you're stuff. definitely committed to the craft at that point in time when you're spending that kind of dough on it, eh? Yeah, it was crazy. So, like, I never, you know, I, I tried a little bit, always wanted to do it, never did it. And then uh, this year, kind of what happened was, you know, like a lot of people this spring I just wanted to you know sick of COVID and whatever and, Needed something and to do. Uh, yeah I wanted to get outside more and uh you know just get in better shape a little bit and this and that my wife it's funny because um I started going on more just regular walks around the neighborhood and stuff with my wife yeah, and yeah. and she um she got sick of you know all the politics and all the yeah, you just want to shut COVID all conspiracy off. yeah she wanted to shove so she started joining these Facebook bird groups and wildlife groups and 100%. photography things just to look at the pictures like she doesn't shoot photos yeah. yeah so we'd be out for a walk and she'd be like oh that's a red-winged blackbird sit call and that's a and she'd be pointing stuff out right oh this is this bird and this bird so uh you know when she was doing that I thought well maybe I'll start bringing my camera and then I thought well let me look online uh let me see it's been a you know a few years since I've really looked at the new tech that was out there and uh, it's way more affordable now to get a decent long telephoto lens that's you know has really decent image quality still i noticed like, that you can i get, actually googled uh, what you use by i looked yeah. at your instagram and i was like what is this guy yeah. using and i was like man that's affordable i'm like that's not that's not ridiculous and i was just like dang i need to get that no yeah. well yeah that's the thing like i'm you know my primary lens is the 100 and 50 to 600 millimeter Sigma contemporary lens, which is only $1,200 Canadian brand new. You and you can pick them good? up used. You know, I've shot Sigmas before. Like I've shot, uh, I have a couple other Sigmas, um, like an ultra wide angle. And I've got a small Sigma prime that I've had. And uh, the new ones are getting better and better. Like I always like the image quality of the Sigma. Um, I'd say so. As far as the third party. Yeah, I liked them more than the Tamron. Um, just the color cast of them was a little bit better. Not quite as good as the Canon still. Um, and, you know, the autofocus, you don't get that, you don't get that really fast autofocus. Uh, the Canon L series would have, but it's getting better. Like, that's the only thing I think I miss a little bit. Like, I'm kind of tempted eventually here to pick up, like, the new 100 to 500 um, R series, the mirrorless Canon L lens. But it's like a, almost four thousand so dollars, you know. Comes, but it's just got that yeah, little bit extra. When it comes to mirrored versus mirrorless, what's your advice? Like, what do you prefer? I just switched to mirrorless after 
like I've been shooting Canon SLRs since the very first Rebel, right? I remember that's how I ended up. I bought the very first Canon Rebel that came out yeah. uh, when we went on a trip to Costa Rica. And so that was kind of my introduction to, okay, this is it. I'm going to get into photography. Yeah. yeah. So I started with that in a kit lens and then, you know, went from that to, oh, what did I, I think I went from that to like a 20D to a 40D to a 7D to a 7D Mark II. And now I went to, finally made the switch to mirrorless. I actually have a small Sony mirrorless camera that I've used. I used to take with me mountain biking and snowboarding and stuff. Um, so I had a little bit of experience with the mirrorless, but it's only now with the, you know, the brand new uh, R lenses like or the R series cameras. Like I picked up the Canon R6 to try it out, and it's awesome. Like it's got some really nice features that I think put it above a regular DSLR. But at the same time, uh, it's not all there yet. Yeah. Like I find sometimes the autofocus with the mirrorless. Um, it's good. It's really good when it locks on like the new eye tracking, especially for animals and stuff, when you can get it to lock onto the bird and then you can get it to lock onto the eye, especially in flight. Um, can it's you, great. Like, can you follow it while it's in flight? Yeah. You don't have to. Well, that's the thing is like, if you're holding down. So how I have it, mine set up is, you know, I use back button auto focusing, which is kind of a popular thing, especially for wildlife yeah. photographers, if you look into that. So I, w I had been using that for a while. And what I do is if I see an animal, like, especially with the mirrorless, what you kind of have to do is autofocus the old fashioned way, mm -hmm. you know, like select your point, focus on the bird or the, you know, whatever animal it is. Once it's got the focus on the animal, then I'll switch to the eye. The, um, the eye tracking will automatically generally find the head of the animal and then quickly find the eye. Um, but it doesn't always work, especially in really low light. I find like it's, yeah, well, you know, or it happen, a, that's when they're all out. Yeah. Really low light or at a far distance, it won't find the eye sometimes. Right. So you can't rely on it. And then the worst case thing that could happen is while you're trying to switch to that eye focus, all of a sudden it'll grab something else completely off the animal. And then what yeah. I find is with, especially when you're really far out at 600 millimeters, you got a very shallow depth of field. And with the mirrorless, if you lose track of that, animal and it focuses on let's say a tree in the background yeah. if it has a harder time finding the animal again than an slr will the slr you can kind of bring it over top of where that animal is in and get that focus back but the the mirrorless it won't do that a lot of times and you end up having to manually focus back out enough to find the animal and then lock on again so like you've got to it you got to get used to that it takes a little bit more you know i definitely lost a lot of shots the first few days i was trying it and I'm starting to get the hang of it now. But when you do lock on, like where it's really helped me, the other day I saw some photos of uh, pheasants uh, that in flight. I wanted the pheasant in flight shot. So yeah. I saw a couple, you know, male ringneck pheasants and they're, you know, I see them just kind of walking. And so while the bird is on the ground, you know, I focus in on it, use the eye tracking, get it to lock on. And I could tell the bird was going to take off. So I just kind of, you know, held that eye tracking on. And the nice thing is, is as soon as that bird takes off, even if you're not paying attention 100%, like that focus will just f follow the bird. Like it'll just stay on it. Perfect. And so, yeah. So then really all you have to do is you can focus more on the overall composition, right? You can like pan with it, keep the bird in frame, and you're not having to really focus on the eye and the tiny little autofocus point, you know, because sometimes in the past, you know, that's what you're focused on. You're like trying to keep that on the eye. And while you're doing that, you kind of lose perspective on the outside edges of the viewfinder. And so then you're cutting off, you know, the wings, you know, the birds yeah, moving yeah. towards you. You're, you're sure. not having enough time to, to, uh, you know, um, pull back or something, you know, yeah. go from 600 mil to 500 as it's getting closer to you. But I find now, because I can rely on that eye tracking once it's once it's working, yeah. Then it, it helps you kind of get more keepers because it helps you just focus on, you know, your overall image. Dude, pheasants which is kind are, of nice. Pheasants are tricky. The ones in my area, yeah. the moment they they they're like deer almost. They're the deer of the bird world. They'll be like chilling, hanging out on the like the ground, whatever. And then before I even notice they're there, I just hear the I just hear them take off like 
and it's just like, yeah. what the hell was that? And, I'm just, and like sometimes you just catch a glimpse of it, and it's but it's like into the trees, it's into the bush, it's gone. So I still haven't got a photo of any of those, but I've seen them plenty. Oh, it's it's hard. Yeah, I've been scared. I've had the shit scared out of me more than I've gotten good photos of them. Yeah, just by almost stepping on them, and then they like take off. But yeah, uh, yeah it, it so it's good. Like the mirrorless, I think. Like right now, a lot of people are switching to it, and it's definitely the future. You can see it's a future, but I like the next generation after these ones, or the the you know even farther down the road, like ten years from now, it's going to be insane what that thing can do. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, I have a I have a couple of cameras. I have one that's it's a digital camera. They call it a bridge camera, but it's it's a digital camera more or less. I have a DSLR as well, but the digital I got because it had a super zoom like scope yeah. lens on it basically and i was like well this is okay for video i suppose but you really notice the quality go downhill like every six months basically it feels like because there's so much better stuff out there from like six months to like a year and then you go online you see that they got like something that goes from like you know 70 to like now they have like an 80 they probably have a 90 somewhere in the pipe coming for the oh super yeah zoom. yeah the super zooms I, they've gotten pretty good too. Like I've seen some good ones of those, and that's a nice little. Like if you can't go the DS, the whole DSLR route, a lot yeah. of people I find, you know, especially nowadays that camera phones are so good, you really don't need the DSLR unless you're doing certain type of photography, are right? And a lot of people they don't want to carry that around, like the weight and the extra lenses. Yeah. And it's expensive. Are, but are the camera phones really better, or are they kind of like photoshopping the pic you're taking? You know, with like these weird filters and saturations. Oh, yeah. So it's hard yeah, to say it's, if it's, it's like a bit of both. Like the representation of like what's being taken. I, I, personally, I don't think, the, yeah, the quality's not there. I don't think the quality's there personally, but the convenience, right? And and they take some decent photos. They take better I photos. I remember than like I years ago. <laughs> yeah, years, years ago, I used to um, do a lot of like. Uh, Photoshop touching of photos before there was any of that filter stuff, right? Yeah. And so I'd be posting photos and, you know, and it kind of, I remember when it bugged me because right at the height of, um, what's the term? It's that hyper real look. Like HDR was just kind of coming out, but there's like a hyper realism look. Yeah. And I was kind of into that look at the time. And it was uh, very vivid in it, like kind of boxed. very vivid, it's, it's super 3D. sharp. Yes, yeah, like three D look. I was into that, and uh, and then it bugged me because like maybe a year later, all of a sudden it's like, oh, they just started throwing out all these filters in the phones, and then that look because you could do it on a free app, and then everybody was doing it, and then like it just, you know, it, I I can't shoot anything like that anymore. It makes me sick. <laughs> but yeah, but it, yeah, because now everybody yeah. can do that. It was like a fad, yeah. and now everyone can it do got, it. Yeah, special. It, no, I remember like right when it first started and I was read, seeing pictures of it in like, you know, pro photography magazines. And I was like, man, that's awesome. Like, look at this. And yeah, it was a year later. It's like, oh, here's a free app that does it when you click the button. So, yeah. but I know I've had so uh, photographer friends that have kind of got rid of. No, I've got photographer friends that got rid of all their SLR gear wow, and really? just go with their phone. Damn. Yeah, but it depends what you shoot. Depends that's what you true. shoot. Like if you, yeah, if you do you know, travel photography and just do uh, landscape photography and stuff. A lot of times that's way easier and cheaper and, you know, lighter to carry around. hundred percent. That is true. But you can't, uh, that's the thing with wildlife photography. That's one thing I like about the wildlife photography is that not everybody can just do it on their phone and they can't put a filter on their, from their phone and, and, you know, you still wildlife, you've got to go, you got to find the animal. That's true. You've know, you got to get close to the animal. Um, you know, and then, yeah, you need gear. You, it's all about the fast shutter speed. You can't get that, those sharp flight shots or movement shots with a, a phone, really, as much as you can. Yeah, I see some SLRs. of those professionals. They're in, like, full hunter's garb, basically. They got, like, an outpost. Yeah. And they're just staked out there for, like, hours on end. I'm like, these guys are dedicated, like, dedicated. I'm just like, I couldn't believe it, man. I was just like, I guess that's what it takes to be, like, the big head honcho in the like i think so the wildlife yeah. community have you ever tried submitting any of your stuff to like a magazine or like not not you no or, no 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 I, I think you should um, try man throw one in there. yeah i don't know that i don't know how it works nowadays with that kind of stuff like i've just been 
I think I don't know. Got to have your ear to the floor on like the competitions on like their websites and stuff, and like yeah, you see it pop open. You just go, well, I got a bunch of photos. We'll see which one sticks. I have started like because um, I like to read a lot, and I'll, I read a lot of like photography magazines or whatever. So I've started to kind of collect info for like contests when I see it, right? But I have yet to submit anything. So like I'll I'll kind of just take a snapshot and be like, oh, okay, well, here's a, here's a contest or here's the email address. You know, I've kind of started making a library of that, but I haven't done anything yet. That's good. That's the first step. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Right now I'm just still trying to kind of put stuff on Instagram, put stuff on Facebook. Yeah. I like that last Uh, post. See where it goes. Yeah. I was just like, I'm like, that's amazing. But I'm like, he's setting the bar high for himself. (laughs) Like now he's got to do it all the time. Or I'm not going to, I don't like that all the time though. Like I've seen people who do it like, all the time, the three in a row. Yeah. And I, I almost don't like it all the time, but once in a while. And the reason I did that one was because that eagle shot, like I posted a few other eagle shots and I kind of get sick of the, here's an eagle with a blue background. Like it's just kind of, I don't know. On, yeah. on Instagram, especially in the square form factor, those shots don't look as good because when you're trying to crop it, I mean, you can, I guess now do, it doesn't have to be square, but the, I find the other size is not really good. Like the square is kind of better. So I just did that one to try to do something different with it. And I'm still trying to learn Instagram stuff. Like I feel like this old guy on yeah, Instagram. So do like I, do. I don't understand how the stories work half the time. Some people got you know? really fucking amazing um, Instagrams. Oh, yeah. And they're just, I'm just like, wow. I'm like, how does this guy got this figured out? Like he's got it down to like the pixel basically for uploading these like pictures into being like the perfect like sequence. And I don't Yeah, know. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get it. There's a lot more... And like, I don't understand Twitter at all. I do have a Twitter, but I don't use it. Like I posted a couple things there, but I don't under- Twitter is like trying to learn another language. Like I don't understand. <laughs> I'm thinking about maybe starting to advertise the podcast on Twitter or something. Cause that's still one world I haven't dove into, but I'm recently just went onto all the platforms now. So I'm like, well, I guess social media is the next logical step, but yeah, you got to get it out there. Yeah. Somebody was telling me that Twitter is the best for reaching out to a, the widest range of people. So I don't really know much about it, but I heard, yeah, Twitter's great for the reach, but you've kind of got to work all the angles, you know? I even see now, like, That's true. I'm super addicted to TikTok just to watch it. It's <laughs> awesome. Just a wicked time That's killer. That's another thing I won't go down. I don't know if I'm ready for that. No, but there's, uh, there's like, wildlife photographers on TikTok. I started following a few of them, and now because, you know, as soon as you start liking a few of them, the algorithm figures you out and it starts giving you more of it. So yeah. I'm getting more, I'm seeing more and more wildlife photographers on TikTok, which is interesting. Like you wouldn't think that would be an avenue for wildlife photography, but yeah, it could be. It's kind of cool. I mean, I guess it's short little clips and videos, isn't it? So if, yeah, if you it's do like little videography, videos. it's probably perfect. And especially if you get like a, like a Kodak moment, just throw it on there, you know? Yeah, there's there's a bunch of that. I don't shoot much video. Like when I'm out, I try to shoot the odd time if I can think about it. I'll maybe shoot a little video clip. But one thing I've been toying with lately too is I was thinking, and I originally thought I would do it this winter, but I've been too lazy, is I kind of thought maybe I would do some videos and put it on my Facebook page or, you know, maybe even link on my Instagram, just some YouTube videos. Um, just like that's just terrible to say well a little bit of variety but almost like a like a, a tips videos right right not that i'm the ultimate um no but there's a lot know, of people master like to teach people don't really know anything so every little bit of like advice helps and if you can show kind of like an end product it's like listen i may not be the best at what i do or the master but here's what i do and here's my product if you like that product like my end result Maybe yeah. you will want to do this the same way. Well, I get quite I get quite a few people like you know messaging me asking me about what gear you use, what do you do this, you know, stuff like that. And the one thing I find, you know, like getting into wildlife photography this year, you know, I I will watch YouTube videos and you know, even like when I just you know went with the new bought the new uh, mirrorless camera a couple months ago. You know, I do a lot of research, watching lots of videos, on uh, reviews, head-to-head comparisons, all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, lenses, things like that too. And what I find is that 
you know, there's a lot of videos out there. There's a lot of photographers making, um, you know, good YouTube videos, but they're very dry. You know, a lot they of the are, photography guys are. are super dry. They're very to the point. There's yeah. no nuance. There's no charisma. It's just kind of like, here's a thing. Here's the other. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> and they're either very technical, like very that nerdy technical photography guy yeah. or, or it's like, yeah. And, and it's either like the very basic stuff. So it's like, okay, so this is, you know, aperture priority mode and this is your manual mode. It's like, okay, people know that already, you know, or it's to the far extreme where it's like, okay, so this is how you blend 45 layers in Photoshop. And it's like, it's, I'm thinking like there's a avenue for the middle, right? I think like, so. Yeah. Where it's yeah. Like, and I, yeah. I'd like to do like the trailer park boys version of like a photography tips thing. You know what I mean? Like just more layman's terms. Like, you know, you yeah. want a good fucking picture. This is what you do. Like just, <laughs> it's like those like, books you see in like chapters and stuff. It's like photography for idiots. And yeah, basically and it's like okay here's like the basic stuff but here's the stuff that's a little bit above basic where it'll give you like a passing grade it's yeah like the most technical but it's technical enough where you know maybe it's not completely amateur at this point well exactly like i see people all the time post photos like i post for i post my stuff either on like a lot of facebook groups right and the facebook groups are great um a good very active there? yeah but it's it's interesting because on facebook the ones I follow are like local ones to Alberta, yeah. right? So I'll follow like some Alberta wildlife, Alberta nature groups, Alberta bird groups, Calgary bird groups. Those ones are very active, right? And um, that's how you get tips on where stuff is like certain animals. Yeah. Or... Some, yeah. You can tell like people are, it's, it's funny cause it's interesting. Like it's an interesting community there where there's some rivalries mm -hmm. and uh, there's some characters and, there's some drama, like it's fun to watch. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of people like getting upset. You know, I I listened to your last podcast you did with Kristen, and you talk about ethics a lot. And that's the thing, like ethics is a very slippery slope. It's a slippery with a lot slope. of people. It's a slippery right? slope because it's very like where you cut it slope. off, and then like what's ethical, what's appropriate, what's yeah. what's like etiquette. There's like etiquette kind of like you know. I don't think yeah, and I, and I find that. like. It's like everything nowadays, right? Everybody who is a social justice warrior who wants to one up the next guy on who's the most ethical. So you get those people too, right? So then you've get, and especially it's it feels like in the bird community, right? I'm not a birder. I'm the I'm a guy who is a photography guy. What's the bad? Who do you look for? Birds? Wants to take wildlife take pictures of birds, and I look for. Yeah, you might be yeah. a birder. So, <laughs> I know I'm not a birder. I'm not a birder. I'm not a birder. I think you might be though. I'm not a birder. I'm not a birder. <laughs> Do you, do you look for birds? I, I, I look for wildlife. I look for wildlife, okay? I look for wildlife. That's it. I'm not a birder. I don't want to be it's, a birder. I'm not getting gold. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm fighting the fight. I'm not yeah. a birder. But, Dude, well, it's funny. Hit, like, I don't know how old you are, but as soon as you hit 30, yeah. you start looking at oh, birds. I'm 46. Everybody does. Oh, yeah. 46? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody starts looking at birds. Everyone I talk to is like, yeah, dude, I hit 30. And then I really started taking interest in birds. I don't know what it was. Like, a girl, my wife, this and that. No, I don't. I don't have interest. I, I'm not a bird guy. Like, I like animals. I just like the wildlife photography, like the challenge of it, right? Yeah. And even in birds, like, I like, if you look at my Instagram and you look at my stuff, you'll see a trend, right? Like, mostly eagles, owls. I like birds that kill other birds, okay? Birds of prey. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, birds of prey are badass, I like birds like of like prey. 100%. Yeah, I'm not interested in, like, you know, all these different tiny variations of warblers and stuff like i don't care like well some of them great. are super rare and stuff i, and I could appreciate and that. that's what i don't that's what i don't care about like i remember last <laughs> i remember this summer right i saw some post on the bird group where it was like there was some rare warbler or something like that up in edmonton right which is about like a three and a half hour drive or so yeah, four i used to live outside of edmonton oh okay I be, yeah i used to be in alberta back in the day so, yeah to get there back. was this trying to get back. oh really yeah yeah, yeah. There's this one warbler that was in somebody's backyard in Edmonton, right? And people were driving up there and knocking on the door of this person's house and taking picture. And I'm like, the last thing I'm going to do is drive three and a half hours to shoot a tiny little songbird. If you told me there was a grizzly bear up there that I could get good shots of, for sure, I'm going to drive up there. If you can guarantee me grizzly bear. But, like, I'm not driving for a songbird. So that, I'm not a birder in my mind, right? Okay, listen to this. <laughs> have, you, have, yeah. you, have you heard of, like, there's a thing called Lazarus species, 
which basically it's like insp- inspired by the, like the pits of Lazarus, meaning like think that this pit that could like resurrect people or whatever. Okay. And the la- so the idea of a Lazarus species is a species that was thought to be extinct, sort of like the coelacanth, and then it's discovered again. And for some reason, people love that shit. It's like, oh yeah, it's like there's something there's like a there's like a romance to it where it's, it's like oh I found a picture of a bird long thought dead and now you have the picture, like that kind of picture, dude. I think if you were like aware enough to know like this was like some sort of long thought dead species or incredibly yeah. rare and hadn't been like seen in years or reported seen in years, you might be able to get like on the, a magazine cover or like some sort of like notoriety you know i don't know i so almost I got there i think that's i almost got there at. what happened tell me about it um well like when was it it was maybe like a month ago i don't know like you know the snowy owls everyone's been going out looking for snowy owls so i was doing the same thing going out for drives looking for snowies and uh this one day i drove you know i think i spent three and a half hours five hours maybe driving the range roads you know 50 bucks worth of gas because gas is ridiculously priced mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm and I spent all morning, couldn't find a snowy owl, couldn't find anything. Like, I don't remember if I even had any good shots at all of anything. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, I'm coming back into the city. I'm just burned out. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to, I'm driving right past Carburn Park. I'm going to stop there anyway. I'm just going to stop there, walk around, maybe get a shot of something. Because I have nothing to, you know. So I stopped walking around. I was there like 10 minutes and, uh, and Carbon Park is right in the city of Calgary, basically right on the Bow River, if you're not familiar with it. But, uh, so I'm like right in the heart of the city, walking through this park. I see a couple of photographers with their giant lenses pointed up at this tree. So I figured, oh, okay, there's got to be a woodpecker there or something, or something like a great, great, something. or a great horned owl. There's like been lots of great horned owls there. Love that one. So I go look up, it's a bloody snowy owl. Right. So, <laughs> and I didn't find it. Like these other guys found it. Actually, my buddy, Jennel, who he posts on this stuff too, he was the one who had, that's how I met him, is he was the guy who's there taking the photo of this uh, snowy owl. And we kind of became friends. We've been hanging out and shooting together since then. But it's funny. So I took a photo of it. You know, he took a photo of it, whatever. A bunch of guys were there taking photos of it. And it was in the city. Like I spent, never see a snowy owl in the city. Right. And I've been driving around these range roads, couldn't find it. It was just ironic. But the funny thing was, is, uh, you know, so I posted the photo. I, it was a nice photo or whatever. And like, I think maybe a week or two later, I got a message from this one guy. I guess there's like this Calgary, there was this Calgary Christmas bird count that they do. I don't know what it is, some kind of a bird count. And um, where they count up all the birds within a certain period of time, whatever, right? And they compare it to every other year and whatever. But I got the message from this guy because he's like, can I use your snowy owl in the bird count for this year? And he was like, you know, with the University of Calgary or something like that, not, oh, you know, awesome. in charge of this bird count. So I was like, awesome. sure. But he was like, it was like that thing because he's like, there hasn't been a snowy owl seen within the city limits for like nine years or something, you know? Oh, and so, damn. Yeah. So it was one of those where it's like, it's, it wasn't extinct, but you know what I mean? It was like but the rare, up. like we yeah. finally... It's back in the city. Like, you know, where did you, where did you shoot this? That's Cause I awesome, said it was, dude. yeah, I said it was, you know, in the city kind of thing. And that's all I said. I, so I told him yeah, I was in Carbon Park and uh, yeah. So yeah. You know what? It's actually ironic. So a lot of my friends, they live in the city. They live in Toronto and I live like an hour and a half North of that in the kind of like in the boonies. And okay. so like, I'm always um, in the countryside looking for stuff and here and there I find some decent things. But you know what? There's a lot of countryside. So these animals have like a massive roam area. When they go to like little like parks and like conservation areas within the city, they see a fuck ton of wildlife. And I'm like, how is the city having so much wildlife? So the conclusion I kind of came to or like me and my friends came to is like there's such dense like areas where these animals can like live that they're all kind of concentrated. So you're if you go into these like little parks and stuff, there's like a greater chance of seeing them just because they don't have a whole lot of options. Whereas yep. like in the countryside, it's like they are spread out and it's like, g- good luck. Not just that. that, but in the city, they're way more used to people. So they don't run and hide. Do you That's know what I'm true saying? Too, they no go hunting. about their, they're yeah, they go hunting. about their normal day. Like, I, you know, all summer I was posting photos and a lot of them for Fish Creek, 
because I would just go down. I live pretty close to Fish Creek, so I'd just go down Fish Creek, walk around by the river, trying to get some exercise. And I was getting shots of like everything. And it was funny because like, you know, I was constantly getting my friends on Facebook just messaging me going like, I can't believe, like, where are you finding all these things? Like, how, how are you finding all these within the city? And I'm just like, they're there. You just got to look for them, you know, and you don't notice them until you start looking. But once you start looking, it's amazing how much you find. And it gets frustrating because like I was out in Banff this summer. I go to Kananaskis quite a bit. And it's like you said, yeah, you go out there and you walk around and it's, there's so, it's so much more spread out. Right. So the the animal the wildlife is just spread out way farther so you know and when you're out there if you see something like they take off right away from you like even even uh like just outside the city here like there's a lot of bald eagles right now um you're some people have birds, heard say the it's birds like, take off on you oh birds take off it, it, yeah. any animals take off what? No, right bad. like Oh, no, well, not Banff. Like, as far as, like, deer and elk, no. But, like, um, the birds do a little bit in Banff. Like, it's hard to find the birds in Banff. Yeah, you know? I haven't really seen any birds in Banff. I've seen lots of elk, lots of deer. No. A couple mule deer. Um, I've seen a grizzly. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I hope uh, the bighorn sheep, mountain goats. Seen yeah, those stuff. those guys don't take off. The birds, though, they're all they're there, but they're way more skittish in Banff like the birds I've seen there or, and they'll be way up high in the treetops, like right up at the top. So you'll hear them, but you can't see them because they stay up top yeah, a lot. Zero bird photos from Banff. And I, I've yeah. made points of going out there for like a week just to do some, you know, photo photography videos and, you know, just that fun. And I don't have any bird pictures to show for it. None, zero, but I'm also not the greatest photographer. Wow. But I didn't see any. <laughs> I didn't even know no, this it it's hard to find them. Yeah, there's there's some around. Like I found some, but it's hard. Like it's way harder to find them. But even like osprey out there or bald eagles, if you see them, you can't get as close as you can here. Like uh, this Sunday, the, the, your, that eagle shot you were talking about that's on my Instagram. Um, that was funny because I went down to this spot where I've seen a couple adult eagles very close to where I live, and they've got a nest on this island and they kind of go up and down the bow and they hunt a little bit there. So I knew this one area where there's a couple of trees that they like to, they like to set up in these trees and hunt the ducks down below them. And so I went there on Sunday, couldn't find them. They weren't there. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to go to these trees and I'm going to wait. And it took 10 minutes and I could see one all of a sudden coming down the bow, like right at me. But this is the kind of thing that doesn't happen outside the city is like, I stood there maybe 30 feet away from this tree, right? The mm. bird flew right at me. That's how I was getting those shots. Like he flew oh, right shit. at me, <laughs> flew right over my head. Like I had to focus back out from 600 millimeters because it was too close. He was like, flew right over me, landed in the tree, right like 30 feet from me. And when I turned around, its mate had flanked me and the other one had come around from the side and it landed beside it. And so they just sat up in the tree watching the ducks for a while. I sat there because I wanted to get some shots of them maybe trying to get a duck, right? Yeah. That was what I was looking for. So I sat there for a bit, you know, maybe 15 minutes go by. One of them takes off, goes downstream, hunts, whatever. The other one stayed there for another 20 minutes, not bothered at all by me. People walking right underneath the tree, you know, doesn't mm-hmm. bother him at all. Eventually he took one swipe at the ducks. The ducks were smart. They took off. He didn't get any. And then like went farther down, you know, went down to meet, meet its mate to go back to its nest or whatever but you will never get that i've never seen that um even just outside the city like on the same bow river like if you just go you know because i'll go to spots just south of the city on the bow and i know where there's some bald eagles there too but i can't get nearly nearly um as close to them as i can in the city Osprey seem to be less apprehensive of people yeah. In my experience, I've actually got a couple photos of Osprey. I know where there's some pretty good nests and stuff too out by my area. There's some in, uh, out by Eugenia Lake. It's a really nice cottagey area. And um, yeah, dude, like Osprey are fucking badass. And if you can catch it like snagging a fish out of oh, the yeah. water or duck or something, 
dude, you could submit that to Nature is Metal on Instagram. You'll get a feature out there, yeah. like no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. one of my goals this year. Yeah, because there's there's a lot of osprey that nest on the bow in the city, mm-hmm. and like I saw a ton of them this summer, and I got some good shots of them, some good flight shots, but I didn't get that shot that you're talking about. And you know what bugs me is there was two times where I just happened to turn around and the stupid osprey was flying right at me with the trout in its claws, flew right over top of me, and my, I couldn't you know, find him in the viewfinder quick enough and focus on him, and it was over. And I missed it twice. So yeah, that's that's how it goes, buddy. Like I, I know so many times, like the best things in life. It's like this is just for you. Like it's kind of like nature, just kind of like tilting its hat at you or tipping its hat at you, and it's just kind of like here here's for your experience. Like you don't get the t- no one else gets to know about this but you. And this is kind of like, yeah. It's sort of like this. It's, it, I consider it a special moment. Some people consider it a missed opportunity. Maybe it's both. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely the missed opportunity crowd on that one. Yeah, it, <laughs> that stuff haunts me for a long time. I'm just like, oh my god, so it makes me so angry. What's your like? What's your goal right now? To, like, what's it, what, what what animal do you want? What's on the top of your bucket list? Like, what's your like? I don't know, your holy grail animal. Well, my bucket list holy grail animal right now, I'd say, would be a cougar. Yeah, that's on a lot of people's man. When people yeah. get shots of that. They don't care how shitty that shot is. They put it up like it's a fuck, like it's the best thing ever. Yeah. They're just like I saw a cougar, and dude, they're like not, they're like heavily nocturnal. So seeing them during the day is, oh. like, it's it's kind of super super rare. As far yeah, as I've know. never seen one. Like I've done, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of fishing. Like I, I do a lot of fly fishing, and you know hiking. And I've I've spent lots of time out in the mountains. I have never ever seen a cougar i've seen lynx a couple times i saw a bobcat this year i've never seen a cougar it's the one thing i've never seen in the wild let alone got a picture of like so that's that's definitely the holy grail and at the same time it's extremely scary like you don't want to see one but you do yeah you know like (laughs) from last time i checked i think banff has like seven that they that the like wildlife people like monitor so you got to imagine how large of an area that they kind of like roam for like individuals for like their hunting like grounds or whatever so they're very dispersed and they have like a large territory for themselves right well kind of you know what there was um i there's a bunch out close close to closer to calgary like by pritis and bragg creek and stuff like that right right. and i think there was yeah like on the sheep river and stuff there's there's quite a bit of cougars i think there was um I don't know exactly where it was. I feel like it was somewhere between Pritis and Bragg Creek on on somebody's acreage maybe this year. I saw it at, um, online. There was a video somebody posted. It was crazy. It was a trail cam that they had set up on their property. It's usually trail cam- cams to catch them. Yeah, but this one was a video and had seven cougars in the trail cam video. And they were playing like they were just... The, it was the craziest video. There were was like two or three of them. Or like no, they looked like they were... Or? They look like they were probably younger, right? Some juveniles and stuff, but like younger ones, adolescents. But there was like, there was a couple, you know, I remember in the video, like rolling around, playing, just look like, like house cats, you know? And then another one sitting over here and one walking past. And it was, it was insane. I was like, oh my God, like imagine that concentration. of. Could you imagine they started forming like prides, like lions on the savannah? And then like, you're just out in the bush and all of a sudden like the fucking lion, like the cougar pride just rolls in on you. That'd be oh more terrifying god. than wolves. You'd just be like, oh my god, I can't even climb a tree. <laughs> like, yeah. I've don't. seen a couple wolves in the wild, but I've never seen a cougar. That's the one thing I've never seen. And I mean, this year my goal is, yeah, I mean, that's not, I don't even call that a goal. Like that's the, like you said, that's the holy grail. That'd be the trophy. I don't even consider that a goal. I'm not going to go out, I don't think, and be like looking for cougars. But I definitely want to get out and get some good it's bear shots. One by chance. By chance, yeah. yeah. Best case. Best case. Are you thinking about but getting I, a trail cam? There's some trail cams no. that are pretty intense, man. Like they'll they have like you can get like a SIM card for it and then it'll text oh, you yeah. the image and then you can like yeah. post it. But I don't know. My, People my, might steal it. Like I don't know. My brother in law has trail cams like that. He does that and he's he loves all that kind of tech. But uh and there's a guy on some of these Facebook groups that does that. I just, he posts regular trail cam shots from his place. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not my thing. A, a, like the quality's not there, and B, like I feel like you're not doing anything other than setting the trail cam up. You know, correct, like 
correct? Yeah. It's sort of like so, a sub. It's like a sub art of photography. It's kind of just like, meh. Like, yeah. Cool, you do it, but like, it's also kind of like, meh. there was no like artistic effort or it was just kind of like automated. Exactly. And, yeah. and I mean, in my, that's the thing for me, it's more the, it's the creativity, it's the challenge, it's the art part of it that I like. So yeah. that just doesn't tick the box for me, you know? Like, I'm, I'm not, trashing if someone else likes that trail cam thing because that's I, I, that's I, I, almost a hobby in itself i don't you know, do it but i i kind of yeah. like appreciate it because it's like uh, if you're trying to find like a cougar and you're like you're really like you're like committed to like that you're gonna oh, yeah. probably need to set up trail camps just to get a idea of like the like roaming grounds right and where you're gonna have to kind of like go out and look for them and you know all that kind of stuff well yeah and if i had an acreage like was surrounded by trees somewhere like that like those people i would definitely have trail camps you yeah. know that uh, why not why wouldn't you do it yeah on your but property, I, I, I you know i'm not gonna go out yeah i live in the city i'm not gonna go out put a trail cam somewhere and hope something comes along that's just not that's not my thing but but yeah that's that's i don't know that's probably the holy grail and i yeah. got a few goals i guess this year like you said it was funny when you were talking about like the guys dressed in camo who sit there all day mm-hmm. that's one thing like i'm trying to get better at not dressing in camo, but uh, I got a little bit of camo, but I'm not I'm not the full camo guy. But the like just develop more patience. Like that is a goal I would yeah, you say for me because I'm still for an hour. That's kind of like part of it. It's like you just gotta sit yeah, still. and that's hard. That's hard for me. Like I kind of I, I like the commando style wildlife <laughs> photography. I'm more I'm like when I go out, I want to keep moving. You know? Yeah, nothing here on because the next it, spot. Yeah, well, and there's a part of me that, like, you know, you go out in the morning, let's say, and you've only got a window where the light's really good, and then it's going to be toast, and then, you know, at the end of the day, there's another window of good light. So if I'm out there, and it's magic hour, and, you know, you get that perfect light, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit there for an hour and nothing happens, or sit there for, like, an hour with a tiny little woodpecker, because I'll, yeah. I'll, you know, I want to get some shots, but then I'm part of me is thinking... What am I missing right now? What is getting lit up by this light that I'm missing? Is it the osprey with that trout in his claws? Are these like, you know, in his talons? Yeah. Is flying down the Bow River? Am I missing that right now? And that just haunts me. So that's why I like to keep moving. It's harder but I know, to oh yeah. And I know that that's not the best way to get the shots you want. Like, all, like you said, the best guys, that's what they do. They sit yeah, there, they wait for stuff to happen. Day, yeah, like that out. is, yeah. so I, I've got to fight that internal battle <laughs> with myself you know of like yeah. what am i missing and i just got to be like listen if i leave i'm gonna miss something here i gotta stay here you know and i'm well, and i'm starting to get better at it i'm starting to but it's as long it's as you're getting shots man i guess you can't say it's not working for you working yeah for lately it's, it seems like a bit of a dry spell the last couple weekends but that's it's painful now because i you know for me it's a hobby so i work full time and then i can only really get out on the weekends and it's funny, like every weekend what comes around now, and especially because it's still winter and you don't have, you know, you don't have as much light during the day. There's only so many hours. And I just, in my mind, I'm like, I want to get like so many shots. And it's so disappointing. <laughs> it's so disappointing if it like a weekend goes by and I end up with like two shots. I'm like, oh, because I, I love the Photoshop. Like I love the post-processing part just as much as shooting. Dude, and so, I hate that part. Yeah. I can't stand oh, no. that. I don't, I don't. I don't Photoshop nothing. I'm like, it's going on raw. Everything's raw. No. See, I'm the. I'm. Yeah. That's one thing that drives me crazy. Is like, I think in my mind, Photoshop, the post processing, that is the digital darkroom, right? That is like easily. In my mind, it's half. It's half the battle. It's a good way like, of putting it. Digital. Yeah, photo. It's a digital darkroom. Like photography, you know. I think you you split it in half, right? The first half is you got to have the gear, you got to get to the place, you know, you got to have the knowledge, the technique, you got to, you know, get that shot in the camera. But then you also have to apply all that on the back end. So when, because, you know, when you get into the, into the Photoshop, you've got to, you're not just, you know, sharpening it and adjusting saturation. You're trying to make that shot the best you can. And a lot of times, especially with wildlife photography, a lot of the composition happens at the post-processing simply because of the way the autofocus functions on a lot of those cameras and the lenses, right? Like the autofocus on a lot of DSLRs is, um, you know, more accurate 
on the center than it is on the outside edges, right? Or then depending on your camera. Okay. So yeah, a lot of those cameras, like it'll be faster autofocus in the center or and things like that. So a lot of times it's best practice to kind of, you know, center your autofocus point, get the, get the shot, get the animal. But you don't want to post shots with the animals dead center all the time, right? That is not, that totally goes against the rules of composition. So I mean, not always, sometimes you got to break the rules, but 90% of the time, that's not the shot you want. So then you've got to recompose it after. So when I shoot, I'm always in my mind thinking what it's going to look like later when I crop it and, you know. Yeah. Yep, yeah. True. So, yeah. So it's not like composition even all happens in the field when it comes to wildlife photography. Like a lot of that happens later. And that's one thing where I was talking before about maybe like doing some videos is things like that where there's a lot of people and they, you know, they don't go from photography to wildlife. They go from their birder, you know, or mm-hmm. they're a hiker, and then they get into the photography as a side Gu- thing, guilty right? Guilty as charged. Yeah, and so when that happens, I feel like a lot of people, they don't understand a lot of some of the really basic, easy things you can do to make your photography a hundred times better. Guilty. Right? Yeah, yeah, right? So that's the kind of videos I've been thinking, like, maybe I should do some little tips, because I see stuff all the time that people post, and I'm just it just kills me. I'm like, oh... Like if you just did a couple little things, that photo would be so much better. Like okay. it's, let, let me, you know. Let me just be the devil's advocate for a second yeah. here. When I think of Photoshop and I don't use Photoshop, is that still kind of like an accurate representation of what was seen? Or is it sort of like a digital, like now it's more of a digital photo and an unreal thing. No. It's like sort of like, like what would be the difference between a heavily Photoshop picture and a 3D animated picture. No, because I mean, you got to think about it. Like you're shooting digital photography anyway. And your camera, if you go into your settings, the camera, the camera has sharpness, you know, saturation settings, contrast, all that built in. You can do a lot that's of that a, stuff a good point. Yeah. in the camera. And when you use a point and shoot camera, like a, a more basic camera or your phone, it's already doing that for you. Yeah, the phone's already doing that for you. That's correct. Oh, well, even the point and shoot cameras, all that stuff is jacked up, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, whereas if you shoot with a DSLR, it's usually a flat image. And this is one thing I've told, you know, people over the years, friends of mine will constantly, you know, this has happened multiple times where people come up and they go, you know, Oh, I love your photos. Like what camera are you using? I want to go buy a new camera. And I'm like, well, I'm using a DSLR and they're like, I'm going to get one. And then you're like, don't though, unless you're like, don't go buy an SLR camera unless you're going to spend more money on the lens than you are the camera. Yeah. And unless you're going to, spend money on some type of post-processing software and learn how to use it because an SLR image is going to be a very flat image and you're going to be disappointed because it's not going to look like my images or the pro images, right? Like there's nobody on National Geographic that's shooting raw and just here's your raw image with nothing photoshopped. Like nobody's doing that. Every one of those images is post-processed to make it look the best. And like you said, like, you know, you can you can go crazy and overdo it in Photoshop. And I think that's where people think, oh, yeah, it's been Photoshopped, it yeah. right? But it all depends on what you're doing with it. Like, What if you're altering the background? I have no problem with that. And I've, I've done that sometimes. Um, it, I see a lot of people, they do like the moon shot. So they'll take like your picture. That I don't moon. like. No, no, that's different. That's and, different. And then they'll like crop it into a po- picture of like some sort of like yeah. cervid, like reindeer, Maybe like a deer or something. They'll try to put it between the the, the uh, horns or the antlers or whatever. And it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. that's an amazing photo. But then it's like, is that even? That's not even an accurate representation. You took a picture of the moon in the same area. No, that I don't like. Yeah, yeah, that I don't like. That's that's um that's a composite shot. So that's in my mind. See, that's that's a composite. That's not the same. So if you're taking elements from two different images and putting them together. That's a composite. That becomes digital art at that point. That's okay. not so that's photography. Where we, that's where I draw mind. the line. Where, where that's we, where I draw the line. Okay. Like I don't. Yeah, I won't I agree. That cut. Could be a yeah, style. I won't copy the moon and stick it in. Like even fo- like Photoshop now has a really awesome sky replacement filter in it. So like, you can just go in there. I can replace the sky, the background in any image, and you know it's very tempting to do that. But like, and I've played with it. Every time you play with it, 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 to me, it doesn't look real at all, right? So I'm not into that. Like, I could see maybe using it 
uh, in very, very subtle ways. Hard to explain, like just talking about it. But, yeah. but I mean, as far as like replacing the sky, I'm not into that. As far as like, yeah, moon shots or like copying, you know, elements and, put, and adding them to the photo. I'm not into that. What I, the, the one Milky thing I don't way. have a problem yeah, stuff like that. Analysts. Not into that. I I've, stuff all the yeah, time. I'm not into that. I don't do any of that stuff. What I have no problem with, though, is let's say, you know, I've seen lots of them where a person's got an awesome picture of a of an owl or something, and it's sitting on a post, and then there's bird shit dripping down the post. <laughs> and I'm see, I'm going to clone that out. I'm getting rid of that. Because the number one thing when you're processing your images, one of the things you, you should do is is remove distracting elements. To take away from the <laughs> main it would just be like there's shit all over the boat that's it like, right yeah that's what you're going to remember you're not going to remember the beautiful snowy owl you remember the shit and go jesus that bird shits a lot look at the post like, <laughs> so yeah no that's uh, so i'll clone again yeah guilty as charged right if you if you want your shit in your images don't come to look at my page because you know, it's you know, not going to have it you know what i don't you know? like in a wildlife photo though what are like human human elements like Oh yeah, me too. Hate like it. A, like like Hate a it. like a like a man created fence post or a light pole or yeah, the light pole is terrible. Whatever's in the background, like cars or people or sidewalks or whatever. Yeah. dude, I can't. I hate that. So all my I photos that. that I've ever taken, if it has anything like that, I'm like, this is garbage. This is shit. I can't. I can't. I can't. No, uh, yeah, I'm same this. thing. I still post it, but it's like I can never make a print of this. Is what I say to myself. No, I, was like, this is the- I would never even post it. Like if it's, you know. I've got photos this summer. I took some photos of some black bears in Banff, right? And black bear walking across the road. Mm-hmm. You know, my best shots of it on the road. You'll never see that shot. I'll never post a shot of it on a road, Dang right? Dude. I'll crop it really tight if I can and just do the, the head shot or something. Okay. If I if I got enough pixels to work with, but I'm not going to have the road in there. Um, I've done some snowy owl shots where it's sitting on a telephone pole, but it looks like just the wooden pole. But then, it's, you know, you'll see the bolts in it and the wire. I'll get rid of the wire and the bolts. So it, I don't mind if it's like fair, wood, fair right? Because at yeah. least it's wood. wood and like you said, like a fence pass. post, a fence post I can deal with. Metal, I'm not dealing with it. If it's sitting on a stop sign, not posting that, right? I'm, it's not going to happen. But then... Because, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. That, to me, that just ruins it. Like, I don't want to see that. Sometimes yeah. it's okay. So I don't... You've probably seen this viral picture that's pictures I've been going around where the polar bears are in like the abandoned house. Have you seen that one? No, I didn't see that one. Okay, there's no. there's one going around right now. From it got some like media coverage and stuff like that. It, I forget where this is. It's probably in Europe or something. And these polar bears have basically taken over like this abandoned village or like an abandoned cabin somewhere. And this guy got all these like really good shots of it, where it's like you know the bears are like like their heads are in the window, one sitting on the porch and stuff like that. And I'm looking at it. See, that's like, different though. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. I'm like fuck. I'm like I usually hate like human built things, but this is kind of like nature taking back you know what yeah. was theirs before kind that's of, a, so that's it's, different it's more, yeah that's more of a dynamic to it i don't know i'm such a picky I, person I'm, I'm with you i've got a few i've got a few owl shots where the owl's sitting in the window of an old abandoned building yes yeah, that, that too, i don't like mind a barn owl type thing yeah 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 you get the barn you get the window you know maybe some smashed glass in there or something i've seen those pictures that looks nice but what i don't like is the metal elements at all i hate that kind of stuff to me if there's wood, if it's just wood, okay, it's still a little bit natural, right? Um, and yeah, if it's an old it's abandoned older, barn, you get yeah. that cool old barn look. That's not bad. The rustic, I can deal with that. But like telephone poles, sitting on a concrete block or something, walking across an asphalt, you know, pathway, no. Sitting on a bridge even, like not interested. Like that's yeah. just not. Damn shame. That's the, yeah, I, I hate that. So, and then, you know, I'll Photoshop out maybe the odd, like let's, there can even be like a branch in the way, right? Mm-hmm. Or like some trash, like you know, someone's shooting a photo of a of an owl on a post. If there's a plastic bag on the ground beside the post, like Photoshop it up. Like, come on, like things <laughs> like that, right? You've got to. There is some people though that they don't like that. They want it totally, like this is it. It's untouched, and oh, yeah, it's untouched it's wrong. weird because they have like a pride in that, right? They're yeah, yeah, and, I, and and to me, I'm like that's just dumb. I'm like that's not. You shouldn't have pride in that. Like you're you're leaving your work unfinished. That is unfinished. Ooh, but that's just that whole. I don't know. I everybody's like got it, little different ethics, right? And everyone's wants to. I don't know. Raw I'm very opinionated. Versus, <laughs> raw versus like yeah. artistic, like yeah. creativity slash like um, I forget the word for it. But like, 
Yeah, man. I don't know. That is a that could be a, that's a point of contention in the uh, wildlife photography. It can community, be community. I think maybe it can be. Yeah. I I don't think in the wildlife photography community. I think with certain people, it is. I like think it, overall yeah. wildlife because here's the, like you know what that is. That's photojournalism, right? If you're photojournalism, yes, that's the whole point. You shoot what's there. You know, you don't Photoshop things out. Like that's photojournalism. But I'm not shooting photojournalism. I'm shooting artistic wildlife shots, right? Yeah. That's the difference. If you're shooting for the news or something, yeah, that's a whole different story. So I think that's kind of the line. That's how I look at it. Photojournalism versus art. Interesting, you know? interesting. Yeah. What, have, you, have you ever wanted to get or seen one of these things? They're called like a spirit animal. And basically these are like animals with like a white, all white coloration. They're not albino. They just lack like the pigmentation in their fur. And there's also like a uh, an all black version of that. I forget what they're called. It's like melanistic or something like that. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there there's really popular areas for um the like brown bears in BC for that. They call them like spirit bears. When I was really in, no, yeah, I never heard about that. And then uh, when I was in Banff a couple of years ago, there was an all white squirrel on um one of the campgrounds there. I forget what the which camp. I think it's called like uh, Tunnel Mountain Campground Number Two. There was a white squirrel. I okay. couldn't get a shot of it because the thing wouldn't fucking stop moving. But I guess you would call that a spirit squirrel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, like I don't a know. spirit squirrel. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of looking forward like one day getting like an all white moose, like a like a like a big you know. Oh wow. Like a big bull, like you know, just like if he was all white. I've seen a few of those pi- those yeah. pictures online. I'm like, that's fucking cool. Or even like the all white deer and like a herd of like a few others. And then, uh, obviously, like an all black cougar would be amazing too, since they're like that's I've like rare. S- I've seen some rare. birds like that, like that are. I've seen the birds like uh, what you're talking about. I've saw. I think I even just recently saw a great horned owl. Somebody posted that was like that. That had like that. It was almost like an albino. I can't remember. There's a term for it. I can't remember. It starts with an L. Oh my god, I can't remember what it is. But yeah, where it's 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 like that. It's just the pigmentation is just, it's all white for yeah. the most part. I, not I used, solid white but i used to love yeah. the uh like bald eagles ospreys all that stuff but then i saw a video once of a great horned owl and it was on the ground and i guess it got defensive and it blew up all its feathers and it's like wing feathers to look like kind of like a turkey but the way it did it man it just looks so oh, yeah? badass i was just like i'm like okay owls have won me over owls are now the new like top tier like bird for me i don't know like Eagles are still badass. Golden eagles, like uh, bald eagles, they're still badass. But they don't do that thing that owls do. And if you could ever catch, like, an owl doing that kind of move naturally, not because like like one of us provoked it or something, but like you know, it's just like defending something or its nest or like somehow into it with like some other like animal of prey. I don't yeah, know, I think that'd be like the ultimate shot. I don't know. Yeah, I've never even heard of that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm I'm with you though on owls like that's probably my favorite even better than like you know any kind of hawk or eagle or osprey it's owls those are my favorite I've seen lots of owls this year and I'm getting a lot better at finding owls but uh, that's what I'm doing tomorrow I'm going on a I took the day off work and I'm going to go look for a couple great grays and that's what I spent last Sunday doing looking for great grays and I struck out but <laughs> I'm always on the hunt for yeah owls are one of the main ones Dude, For I spent sure. the past couple of my days off. I, I just, I did like this long, we had like, I did like this long trek into like the woods and there's a couple of like old hunter stands if you trek in far enough and there's probably like a good foot and a half of snow and no one had been through there. And I was just like trucking my ass through this trail and my feet, my legs got so tired from lifting out like the snow up so many times. I was just like, God damn. And then eventually I make it into the You got to get the snowshoes, man. <laughs> yeah, I do. Like, I always said, oh, this is why people wear snowshoes. I'm like, this yeah. is like. So and then I sat up in a tree and then all the way till like nighttime. And then I was terrified. And I was like, I hope to God there is no like wolves or coyotes that are going to like stumble upon me or anything. And I'm just like walking out, constantly looking over my shoulder. I'm like. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? I'm like, this is a horrible idea. <laughs> but and I'm like, the snow's too deep. I can't even run away. I'm completely fucked if anything comes. But the, the chances of that happening are extremely low. But for some reason, it just like, I was just like, God damn. I don't know. 
It was just because of the. That's snow one thing about. Oh wow, that's that's one thing about doing wildlife photography though. Is like, you know, I used to do a lot of fly fishing, and I'd be, I'd be walking out along the river through the trees, but I'd be yelling out, you know, making noise, trying to scare bears away, you know. Yeah. Now it's the opposite. I'm like by myself. I'm dressed in camouflage sometimes. I'm creeping through the bush, not making a sound. Like, <laughs> and it's creepy because you're like, you're trying to listen. Like I find more things it with by listening for it than you do by seeing it even. So listening for stuff is like super important, but you're just... So that's the thing. I almost prefer sometimes to be by myself mostly because then it's really quiet, you know, yeah. and you can really hear everything. When your friends but, are talking and stuff, it's just the... Yeah. Yeah. But it's scary. You know what I mean? Like like you said, like it, it can, can be... be. Especially if you have like fish on the shore or something and something just smells it and they're just like, oh, there's food. Oh, there. yeah. Yeah. And you never know where something's hiding. Like I had a, I had a snowy owl scare the hell out of me maybe yeah, a month ago during the Christmas break. I was out in Kananaskis and I was walking through, I was walking through all these trees, like through a big section of evergreens. And I was th at the time when I was in there, I was thinking, okay, I was looking for a pygmy owl or a sawwet owl or something, right? So one of those small guys. And so I was going through these evergreens. I thought this is a perfect place where they'd be. And it was a very windy day. So I figured, okay, if there's, if there's owls around here or anything, they're going to be in the trees looking for shelter because they don't like, owls usually aren't flying around in the wind. They don't like the wind like that. So, and then, you know, looking at the trees, I figured, okay, well, they're going to be on the one side of the tree that's going to offer the shelter, right? So as I was coming through, I'm looking on the one side of the tree, right? I'm looking to my right, looking to the left. I'm going through these trees really quietly. And I got, I got up to this one little set of trees and I looked to my right, nothing. And I turned to my left and the tree right beside me, like 10 feet away, maybe the most, all of a sudden this huge snowy owl was sitting there and it just waited for me to like turn my head, I guess. And just as I turned my head, like I didn't even see it. It just burst out of the tree and took yeah, off and scared like, the hell out of me. It waits for you to lose eye contact. And it's like, now's my time. And it just like yeah. bolts. It's like, it thinks like you're locked into like this, like mortal, like combat when your eyes are locked on. Uh, deer do the same. I think even like predators will do it a lot too. Is it kind of yeah. get into like this, like stare off. And it waits for the opportunity to strike. It's like, okay, as soon as it looks away, I'm going to run at it or, you know, something like that. Or take oh, that's, fight or flight, right? that's when they take off. Yeah, like eagles eagles do that all the time. Hawks do that. I find hawks are like the worst. Like as soon as you look at it, as soon as you make eye contact, they take off. Yeah. Whereas, hawks, I can't do I have tons of yeah. hawks near me. These motherfuckers know when I'm pulling up my car from 200 meters away. They're just like, ah, nah, nah, nah. I'm not, they, they, they say fuck that and they fly away because there's tons yeah. of farms and stuff like that. And they're just pecking off like the mice and stuff that, you know, that are screwing around in the barn and stuff like that. So like hawks and falcons, stuff. I find like, you know, if you approach them not looking, they'll sit there if they think you're not looking at it. But as soon as you turn the lens at them, they're gone. As soon mm -hmm. as, as soon as it knows you're looking at it, yes. it's gone. 100%. Whereas like, like you said, eagles and owls, you know, if you're, as long as you're looking at it, they'll almost stay there. They'll make eye contact with you. They'll stay there. But as soon as you turn around, like the one thing you never do is shoot a couple photos and then look at your camera to see if you got the shot. Just keep shooting. Because if you shooting. look at, as soon as you look, it takes off. It takes off. Like they wait for that opportunity if they're going to go. That's what they do. They wait for that. Yeah. So you used to do a lot of fly fishing. Is there anything you can tell me about that? Like I hear it's quite the, it's like an art. It's like a craft. I don't know anything about it. I've never been a fly fisher. Oh, yeah. Yeah, fly fishing. If you're if you're fishing for trout, it's the way to go. And that's the thing. Like I grew up in Saskatchewan, and it was I never did fly fishing. It was all like spin fishing, probably like Ontario kind of thing, right? Or, um, it's the same kind of vibe. Like those kind of places where there's lots of lakes, right? It's mostly your spin fishing and stuff like that. So when I moved to Alberta, um, you know, I, I was living like close to the Bow River, and I you know, went down to the bow and I'm trying to f fish for trout with my traditional stuff. And I realized it just doesn't work as good. Like fly fishing ultimately works way better on the bow. Like you're going to catch usually way more fish, a lot easier. So I just kind of was like, that's it. I got to learn. And I always want to learn, but fly fishing is a huge investment in itself too. Like that's a hobby unto itself that costs a lot like of money a and time. And curve to it as well. Oh yeah. Big time. And, and it can go like, there's a, there's a big learning curve um, just for everything, like casting, 
you know, is it's its own learning curve. Learning kind of how to read the water for fly fishing is totally different than if you're spin fishing and stuff like that, right? And then on top of that, then you know, you can fall deep into the world of tying your own flies. And I was, I got, I was deep into all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I oh, love I was, it. I love to hear yeah, about it. I'll probably I did all that kind it, of stuff. Maybe when I'm a bit older, I think when I got more spare time, maybe I'll start going into that kind of like that art and that craft. I'm going to be doing some hard water, some ice fishing probably this month uh, with a few friends. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't really know much about it. I've done it a couple of years, but um, I'm always getting skunked. So I don't know. This year I was in Cabela's and I was like, tell me everything you know. And then like grabbing another guy, you work here. Do you know anything about ice fishing? Tell me what you know. Tell me the secrets. And it was like, oh, well, I guess you could do this. I don't want to. That's one thing that's never appealed to me is ice fishing. No. You get a hut. That's never. No, beers, that's never. Just hang out. I don't know. You can get like the cameras too. No, see, camera, again. Take some pictures of some, I don't know, fish down there chilling. I See, again, this goes, this goes against my nature right like i told you like i like the the commando photography that's what i do fly fishing man like when i when i go like there's a lot of people even fly fishing you know you'll go they'll go down to the river and they'll fish like one hole or two holes right and they'll fish that hole and they're not getting a bite and then you know you'll see them they'll fish for 20 minutes with one fly and then they'll oh gotta try it try a different fly and then they'll fish for 20 minutes oh gotta try another fly no 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 if if there's fish there they're gonna eat so like I'm the kind of guy, like, me and my buddies used to fish a lot. Like, when we would go, some days we would fish seven rivers in one day, right? And we would be, like, we're doing 11 kilometers up this river and then back. Damn. Like, we are, we are working the water. That's how I was. I was like, if you're fishing with me, you got to keep up like, and you got to move. Was it and you just water? Or was it, like, because a lot of the rivers around here, I can see, and I'm like, there's no fucking fish. I'm like, I don't know. No, no, no. You can see the here. fish. You can see the fish here, yeah, mostly. So, it's same, all same crystal clear. Am, but I still see crystal people, clear. Like, throwing lines into like empty water i'm like what are they doing oh i know there's no fish no no and the fish aren't yeah they're not always just in the pools and stuff like that right so that's true yeah that's yeah that's what that's what with me with with uh ice fishing i think that's why it just never appealed to me because like you drill one hole i'm stuck to this spot and i gotta wait for the fish to come to me I've, I'm always like to move. Like I'll try a spot. Okay, no fish move. here. I'm going to keep you going. You can like set up shop at one spot and be like, okay, fuck this spot. Let's go deeper and you move in more. And then if you got the sled with you, you can like, you know, you can just boogie down the lake. Like, I don't know. I guess. I guess. But it's like, like you said, like if you've got the real elaborate setups, it's harder to do that. And I've seen the guys that are out there with like a bucket and a jacket over their head just sitting on the ice. And that's not, I'm not into <laughs> that either. <laughs> <laughs> dude it gets fucking cold that's the, the low wind, tech way the wind on those yeah. lakes oh my god it'll freeze and burn your face off You're done. but it's got to be one of the best ways to get big northern pike you know like i see more big northern pike caught in the winter ice fishing than i do any other time of the year yeah because they're not you getting know. as many insects right like it's all frozen so you drop like something that looks like an insect or even a minnow because that's not like really the breeding like the minnows aren't going to swim out there and like i don't even think there's many minnows in the winter time so you drop something down similar to that these things will bite especially because you can go out in the center like the middle of the deepest parts where they kind of like hang out and you can just kind of like yeah re- repeatedly like sink lines and just like maybe eventually if it's like a highly po- dense populated lake you'll probably get like a decent catch well i think the another key part too is like I know on the Bow River, like I fished it, you know, I used to fish probably like a hundred days a year when I was hardcore into it, and and we would go out just constantly. And if you hook a, I mean, you you hook a twenty five inch rainbow trout on the Bow River in the middle of summer, that thing is gonna peel off the line. It's gonna go right <laughs> across the river. It's gonna jump six times and it's gonna break you off like nine times out of ten, right? Yeah. Whereas that's, that's pretty cool. in the winter. I've caught more big fish in the winter because they don't jump. You'll catch a rainbow trout in the winter. It doesn't jump, right? And if you want to catch a big brown trout or a big rainbow, your best chance is not, not to not to hook it. Well, and I'd argue it's almost better in the winter to hook it too, but the key is to land it, right? Like it's way easier to land big fish in the winter because I think with the cold water, the metabolism and like they just slow down, right? Just like you would slow down. Like they're they're trying not to spend as much energy and stuff too. Right. Yeah. They're trying to spend less energy. So like you can land those fish. They just don't, 
they don't do the big runs. They don't take off, right? They you can land them quicker, yeah, easier. And I think that might be a key too. Why you see more of those big fish landed, like you know, hundred percent. Yeah, oh by me, man. They imported a bunch like way back in the day. Like I think it was like the eighteen hundreds. They took a bunch of like Chinook salmon, some trout. They dumped them in like Georgian Bay, and now in this place, it's near this place called Collingwood Thornberry Meaford. You're probably not that familiar with these places, but they have this whole thing where these. No. Like, where these like salmon will run up this river and they have like a thing that they built for it. It's called like a, a salmon ladder or like a fish ladder. Yeah. I've seen those in like twice a year, man. It's like, I'm, I'm hoping this spring to get out there during like the height of the run and just get some pretty decent fucking shots of like some salmon jump in this ladder and stuff like that. I think salmon are super bad. Oh yeah. That would be awesome. Because there's like, I, I read something the other day. It's like the salmon are swimming upstream. Uh, like it's almost like in the souls of their ancestors or like of, of, of their friends and stuff, basically Cause so many things are dying, like bear, like yeah. that biggest apex predator, just like feasting on them. Of course, there's probably like the, like people that are probably, well, I think they're not allowed to do it, but there's people that, you know, do it as well or historically have. And then I don't know, like it's only like the strongest survive and they're all just going up there. And I think some of them die when they like finally reproduce. Right. So it's, yeah. Yeah. I don't, there's certain, certain salmon I think do, right. Like, I yeah. don't think, I don't know if they, I don't think they all do certain ones I don't do. Think and so, I, I don't, they're... I can't remember which ones, but. Yeah. Cause how would they get so big? It's like, they must not, either they don't run every year and they only wait till like they're at like maturity or like, ma- like super big or I don't know, man. Cause it's like, they would have to come back down the river. Cause like, otherwise salmon wouldn't get as big as they do. I don't think. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know much about salmon. Cause like there's none around here. I've never really fish for salmon so yeah it's i'm not a, i'm bread. not an expert on salmon or anything salmon by any means fucking delicious i love yeah that. that's salmon i see is at the salmon at the grocery store yeah. and it is delicious get like a you. salmon steak fill it with like yeah. some cheese and like some shrimp and maybe some like full crab bake it in the <laughs> oven yeah i'm about it bro i am about it like i'm just oh I love yeah it. i love it Anyway, dude, I don't know. We've been talking for quite a while now. I should probably wrap her up, you think? So No worries. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I, I appreciate you uh, coming on here. Uh, I'm very thankful. It, dude, it was amazing talking to you. Lots of information. Oh, thanks. Lots, <laughs> lots of insight on, like, photography. Uh, I didn't know you were a fly fisher. Uh, that's super cool. Like, um, is there... Uh, so what's your Instagram? Where can people find you? Check out yourself. Oh, my Instagram. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, my Instagram is Violent Light Photo. So not violet, but with an N. Violent, like violence, like like. like so Violent light. light Photo. Yeah. Violent yeah. Light Photo. I, you planning on doing? Uh, originally, I was, I was going to call it Vicious Light Photo, and then a girl at my work, a friend of mine at work, she said. You know, I don't know. She's like, vicious sounds too aggressive. I, I think you should go with violent light. And I was like, I, I like violent light, but that sounds even more aggressive than vicious, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> I like violent light. I was like, I'm like, yeah. that's, that's a badass handle. I'm like, I'm like, I would call this guy, like, I, I know your name's Corbin, but I'm like, I want to call this guy violent, like, or violent light during the, like, it's like talking to like a, <laughs> like a crusader or something. It's like violent light. Like, he's just, yeah. yeah, I was just like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I've talked to violent. Yeah, Pine Light, yeah. He's pretty cool. I mean, like, I, I liked it when she said, like, I didn't come up with it, so she did, and I hate naming stuff. Like, so I felt like, okay, because it was her idea, okay, great. I don't I don't feel bad, you know what I mean? Like, if, if I pick it, it's always bothering me in my mind. Like, was that the right one? So, Dude, I picked the most. So that was part of the reason I liked I it, plus. Like, my name can't even be found <laughs> on Alexa devices because it's a made-up word. My friends are all laughing at me. They're like, bro, <laughs> you made up, you made it a made up word. You're a moron. So I've been like talking to like, Amazon, oh. trying to get like this thing, like this made up word I made up Epion, like put into like, <laughs> to like the database and it's just not jiving. And I'm just like, this is horrible. I made a mistake. I wasn't thinking, but whatever it's. Oh, uh, you can always, you never know. You can always change it. You can always change it. Not yeah. Too far I've ahead. seen people change the name of their podcast before. Yeah. Yeah. It's happened. Tons of so, times, but yeah. Violent, violent light. I'm glad you like it. That's good to hear. <laughs> I like I like the name. I don't know. I was surprised it wasn't it was uh, not taken. And that was the one thing I did when I when I used it because I was like, okay, I want you know, I want uh, something on Facebook, I want Instagram, and I want Twitter. And 
I didn't get Violent Light Photography, I think, on Instagram, so I just went with Violent Light Photo. On yeah. Facebook, I have Violent Light Photography, and I, didn't even, I don't even remember what my Twitter handle is. It's Violent Light something. Could be Violent Light Photo. I don't know. But yeah. usually, plan- yeah, if you look, just look up Violent Light Photo, you'll find it. Are you planning on doing prints anytime soon? Do you have any? No, I did. Uh, I got some calendars made before oh, cool. Christmas just awesome. to tr- see what they would turn out like. And I just, you know, I gave them, I gave some away and I sold a few of them and I just did a couple runs of that. Oh, Print wise, job, like I would like to, I've thought about it, you know, like I don't want to deal with that whole thing though. And I think I heard you talk about this in the podcast too, yeah, but, it's um, expensive and then they mess up it's, you, it's a pain. That, yeah. yeah and it's a pain. Them. Like I don't want to deal with that. Like, and there's websites that will do that for you, right? They will run the whole thing, let you do a, like, I, th- I think smug mug, smug mug maybe is one of them, or there's a few sites like that where basically like you could put your stuff up there, you know, you set a price, they take a cut, they deal with the orders, they deal with the shipping, everything, but it's expensive for that account to, cause to have that type of account, it's something like, you know, it could be 40 bucks a month. So if you're not selling for 40, you know, or a hundred bucks a month or whatever it is. It's just a money. If you're not actually selling prints, then yeah, you're just, so for me right now, I'm like, I don't know. Like that's the way I would want to do it, but I don't think there's enough demand there. So for me, maybe one day. Yeah. You got to kind of like, it's like, here's my investment amount that I'm willing to put into it. You make them like maybe like five and then you're just kind of like, okay, now I don't make any more until these are sold. And then if they don't sell, it's kind of like, well, this was a, failed investment opportunity but like if you're on like one of those where it's like a subscription platform it's like now you're tied into something they're making the money like you're not so it's yeah i don't know this might be yeah and uh, yeah i don't know i'm if i got locked into that that's the kind of thing too where i'd forget i'm paying that subscription and then like years later (laughs) i'm still getting billed for it and i'm not even using it anymore and yeah i don't know but i guess i guess we got to make it first we got to we gotta get, we gotta make it, bro. We gotta get exactly big, get a exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, kind of too old for that now, but we'll see. Nah, <laughs> no, you're never too old, man. <laughs> Look at these guys that are on like the internet that are huge now. They're like fifty something, and like it took them like ten years to get there. So they started when they were forty, basically. Yeah, never too old. I think I think you don't. I don't think I think we could still hit our peaks. I don't. I don't think we're throw. I don't can't count us out yet. We're, I like your positive thinking. I like that. Bad. That's good. We're, we're gonna we're gonna build an awesome, <laughs> like wildlife photography community. We're all gonna make it. We're gonna be like yeah. the group of seven on steroids on like photography. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know that. I'm that's down. The ambi- in, bro. That's the ambitious long down. goal, long term plan. But <laughs> there's a lot of us, so I don't know. Like, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway. Instagram is. Yeah. That's the thing I like about Instagram versus Facebook. Like Instagram is global like and there's amazing photographers on it like i said like facebook is good for almost like my local community but instagram's amazing like some of those people on there like these amateur hobbyist photographers there's amazing photographers on instagram it's crazy there's some really underappreciated it's inspiring and like frustrating at the same time on some of these you know you see these pictures you're like oh my god how's he doing that but whatever But it's good, man, because that if, <laughs> the more there's people like that, the better opportunity it is for you to succeed in a way. If you want to look at it from the competitive angle, if uh, you know if you're both submitting pictures to like uh, a magazine or something, you know, they, you put more care into your photos. Yeah, than- I'm not. I'm not super competitive. I'm competitive with myself. I don't feel like I'm competing with other people as much in that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, you're your own. I, I get inspired by those people who, who are a bit better. Like I look for those people who I'm like, oh, that guy, I want to be like that. And and the competitive part is just me going, I want to get to that level and pushing myself to, you know, hit, like kind of check those little checklists in my mind of like, you know, okay, I want a shot like that guy has. I want this shot like this guy's got, you know, I want to get one of those. And that's kind of how I, that's my competitive nature with it. Yeah, I hope you keep doing that too because you seem like you got some talent and you got like the 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 energy and the effort to put it into like the post-production stuff and it's really paying off and dude, it looks awesome and I don't know, you, you're still at the start, right? Like there's lots of where lots of space for you to keep posting and keep improving and yeah, I don't know. 
Hopefully well, that's what I, yeah, that's what I think because I haven't been doing, I haven't been doing the wildlife stuff long. Like I said, like just started this spring, and uh, you know, even if you look back at my first Instagram pictures, even or like on my face, Facebook is even worse. Like, but I can see a progression even from there to now, you know. And like your photography is always like that. Like, it's like anything. Like you look back at your old stuff and you can't stand it. You know what I mean? You're just constantly getting a little bit better, learning every day. That's me looking at new my little tricks. current stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's the number one rule that drives me crazy with people. Number one rule of photography is you need to be a harsh self-editor, right? You need to just look at your own stuff and just be brutally honest and critical with it. Only pest or only post your best work. That's number one rule. Only post your best work. So like your Instagram. And I see so many people do that. But anything, even if you're just posting on a Facebook group or posting whatever, you should, you know, if you want to get better at photography, only post your best shots. Like I saw shots today that this one guy I know, um, like acquaintance kind of thing. I saw him post on on a bird group and he posted like, a set of 11 photos, right? Here's 11 shots. And I looked through them and he had, and they were all of the same bird, but there was three shots out of the 11 that were amazing. Like mm. just a, like super sharp, awesome composition, great capture, wicked shot. And then, you know, there was a couple others where the bird's flying away from you. So it's not great. There's a, a three or four of them that were like out of focus, and you're just like, like, dude, you don't don't post eleven, don't post the autofocus shots. Just post the best ones. Like three of those eleven are amazing. If you just posted those three, and then the next time you posted just the two or the one, whatever, that's how you start. People start looking at your stuff and going, oh wow, like look at the consistency of this guy, right? But if you quality if you do quantity. that, quality yeah, it's quantity. quality over quantity. You got that's it. Exactly what it is. Yeah. Number one rule. Number one rule. Hundred percent. Okay, so. we're gonna wrap her up here. Oh, thanks for having Corbin, me, man. I, I'll I, I, I'll talk forever if you don't shut yeah, me yeah. off. Then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you know anyone else that wants to come on here, if you know anyone that's talented or any recommendations, or it, feel free to suggest me to them or point them my way. If you, you know, I'll tell you right now who you should. Um, there's a guy. He's on Instagram. He's a local guy here. He's retired. Uh, I think he retired like last year, kind of got into it, but his stuff is amazing. Uh, his name is David or Dave Clark. Dave L. This is like his middle initial L, Dave L. Clark. And I think on Instagram, his handle is, um, oh my God, it might be DLC underscore or DC underscore nature's best or something. I, oh, he's going to kill me because I don't remember it. If you go on Facebook and you look up David L. Clark, you'll find his stuff though. And yeah. you might find it. You might find it on Instagram under David L. Clark too, but uh, his stuff is great. Like, there's a lot. The of most really consistent. He's my nemesis people. locally. Like, he's the most <laughs> consistent, talented photographer, and he goes out. He's retired, so he's got nothing but time. He goes out every day, and it drives me crazy because I can't get out there, you know. And I and he just posts just consistently amazing images. So, yeah, Dang. I'll have to check him out. I'd love to hear hopefully, his. Hopefully, he's responsive because a lot of people are kind of like, ah, eh, nah. See you later. Yeah. It's like, dang, well, I'll try it. <laughs> but I get it. Like, I get it. So it's kind of like, well, no hard feelings. Uh, I'm, I'm not like butthurt over it or anything. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, people maybe don't, one day they'll come around. Who knows? They don't, a lot of people don't understand what podcasts are even. Like I listen, like I told you in uh, messages, like I listen to a lot of podcasts. So I, I love podcasts. Like I, I, I love the conversation podcast more you know where just people are talking i'm like i listen to long podcasts i'm down with that but a lot of people they have no idea what that even you know they don't listen to podcasts like what is it yeah you know so i could see people being afraid of that just the fear of the unknown almost you know yeah it's intense i get it like a lot of my friends are kind of indifferent to it a lot of them come on but yeah whatever it's all good anyway that's it i'm gonna stop the record now